Did you know that an orchestra has the power to rumble and thunder like a powerful storm? And did you know that an orchestra can make you feel like a train is just around the bend? An orchestra can even take you on a sleigh ride. But an orchestra couldn't do any of those things without the percussion instruments. If you recall, an orchestra is made up of instruments from four different families or groups. The string family, the woodwinds, the brass family, and percussion, which is the most diverse family in the whole orchestra. The percussion family is a big one. That's because basically anything that can be hit, tapped, scraped, or shaken can be considered a percussion instrument. Really? Some of you may have heard the term the, to, uh, well, I had to bring everything and the kitchen sink. Uh -huh. Well, you could bring a kitchen sink to a performance and it could be a percussion instrument if the composer wrote the kitchen sink into the piece. And it probably is that. It probably I'm is sure there is. <laughs> I, I've definitely played a piece where a vacuum cleaner is the solo instrument of an orchestra. Really? Yeah, I didn't play the vacuum cleaner part, but it does exist. And I bet it was played by a percussionist. It probably was. It was, it was, yes. Despite the seemingly endless variety of instruments and household goods that wind up in the percussion family, there are certain percussion instruments that are most commonly found in an orchestra. So here are the most common instruments from the percussion section that are used in a symphony orchestra. And they are? The bass drum, which is very big and has a very low sound because big sound, bigger things are usually the lower they make sound. Like in the string instruments, the bass is the lowest and the violins are the highest. Yep. So, and unfortunately, this may not record well. <laughs> And then the other instrument that is high, that's very common in the orchestra, is the snare drum. The snare drum is a, a regular drum that has uh, two heads like this. And then if I have a little lever, I can flip and there's chains on the bottom that make it sound like this. So something like that might be uh, a roll, for example, but something like this. Or it could be something like a march, for example. So you probably heard something like that. Yeah. The one thing we didn't do at the same time that would normally go along with this would be cymbals. cymbals. So imagine what was just played on snare, and I'll play the cymbal part, and Doug will play the bass drum again. Right? Something like that? Sure. One, one yeah, go ahead. Sorry. One, two, ready, go. we can play loud and soft on yeah. all of these instruments and I didn't show you the, the thunder effect with the bass drum you can do thousands and thousands of years ago our ancient ancestors pounded rhythmically on natural objects those rocks and logs and gourds are considered to be the earliest musical instruments ever played the oldest examples of what we would recognize as a drum, however, were made with alligator skins around 5500 BC in what is now China. Another percussion instrument used in the symphony orchestra are the timpani. They're used even more than the other percussion instruments. Each timpano 
that's the singular form of timpani, has a different pitch. That means they all play different notes, and they have to be tuned, just like a violin or guitar. Other pitched percussion instruments include the piano, marimba, and xylophone. That's right. The piano is considered a percussion instrument. If you look inside a piano, you will see strings or wires. The piano keys are connected to felt-covered hammers inside the piano. And when the pianist presses on the keys, those hammers hit the strings, creating the piano's lovely sound. This is a marimba. It is uh, traditionally a wooden rosewood instrument, originated in Africa, and uh, is now all over the world. It is the national instrument of Guatemala, and it's also used in a lot of mariachi music in Mexico, at which you. You may have heard some of that stuff. And it's very, it gets very low and very high notes also. And it has uh, quite a bit of sustain. Each note can last a long time after you play. Compared to xylophones, they're, you know, they have a very short duration of time that yep. they last. So this is a xylophone like Doug was just talking about. Um, this one is actually made of rosewood. And you'll hear the sound is much shorter and much uh, harsher sounding, much brighter and uh, higher pitch. So uh, compared to the marimba, which is a nice low sound, a xylo sounds something like this. So that's what a xylo, you hear it a lot and definitely in cartoon music, a lot of animated shows. The list of unpitched instruments that you may find in an orchestra is almost limitless. Tchaikovsky even included a cannon used as a percussion instrument in his 1812 overture. <music> Hundreds of years ago, Europeans built ships that were capable of sailing to far-off lands. They would come back from their voyages telling of the exciting things they had seen and often would bring back some of the new foods that they had tasted and the new sounds they had heard. Quite a few percussion instruments entered the orchestra thanks to some of those early explorers. Tambourines came from the Middle East. In fact, they were played way back in ancient Mesopotamia, Greece, and Rome. The xylophone and a variety of bells came from Africa. The triangle, which joined the orchestra in the 1700s, came from Turkey. And you can, and you can play really loud and you can play really soft. That ability to play an instrument softly or loudly 
is what musicians call dynamics. Well, we spoke of earlier about the dynamics and how, how percussion can get much louder. Uh, a thing like this can, can be built. Start very soft. I can just have a low hum like this, or I can have a really crisp crescendo. Speaking of gongs, we should say they're related to cymbals, and most of them originated from, I would say, China or at least in Asia. Yeah. This is a little one. When I'm percussion, I get to lay down grooves if I'm playing a drum set, or I get to figure out how I can fit in with the rest of the orchestra rhythmically, because that's largely what we do, yeah. is play mostly rhythm and color to uh, embellish the sound of the orchestra. We often don't play the melody, uh, but we do sometimes. Yeah, something else that makes our instrument family special is that there's so many different sounds and instruments involved. Uh, a lot of uh, instrument families are very closely related where we have a huge spectrum of instrument sounds and colors that we'll demonstrate some for later that uh, keeps it very interesting and unique to, uh, to our section. When percussionists say they are adding color, it means that the instrument they are playing will add a certain level of personality or flavor to a piece of music, just as the composer intended. Okay, there you go. So that's a little example of some percussion instruments and how it can make you feel like in different parts of the world, maybe. We tra just transported you to the rainforest. Yeah, I started off with a gong from Asia and then we went to a rainforest down from South Africa and South, South America. Gosh. That's okay. South America. A rain stick. And then the other instruments. The other rain sound. Or this is a, a collection of shells that, that sort of emulates water running sound, like a stream maybe. Yeah. yeah. And then we have the, the frog sounds. Yep. We have a kind of a big mama frog. And a baby frog. These are just carved out of wood with little ridges that we scrape. In the movies, a director may add in some special effects. In the world of the orchestra, you can think of adding color as adding special sound effects. We're gonna do a train. This is a giant whistle made out of wood with three different uh, length pieces of wood combined together, it sounds like a train. You'll hear All this. three pitches at the same time. Yep. And then these this are just sandpaper blocks. Yep, just literally sandpaper on a piece of wood. And so I'm gonna make a little train. So he's gonna make this chain and I'm gonna announce its arrival. Yeah. When you get home today, look around and see if you can spot anything that might make a good percussion instrument. It could be an empty bucket, maybe some sandpaper, or perhaps a couple of spoons. Have fun exploring and be sure to join us next when we introduce you to, drum roll please, the Brass Family. Until then, may the force of the music be with you. <laughs>